Hello, I'm Keith Myers. It's my first attempt at a YouTube video, so bear with me. I'll try to speak up. The volume's probably not great. It's just me and Bob today, and I wanted to address some of the issues of kind of combining Wing Chun with boxing. Now, I'm a staunch believer that Wing Chun was designed as a fighting method, not a sparring method, in the sense that in a sparring situation, Wing Chun would be back here looking for an opening. When an opening presents itself, Wing Chun's going to dart in and finish the, the opponent. It's not, Wing Chun is not going to fight, bounce back a little bit, take an assessment, close again. Wing Chun's, Wing Chun's central strategy is to close with the opponent, take his space, break his structure, take him out of the fight. Shouldn't be a back and forth exchange. So, when we try to spar with Wing Chun, Wing Chun often ends up looking like crap in people's videos. People often resort to a pseudo boxing structure to try to say they're doing Wing Chun. So, I think there's an evolution we're seeing in Wing Chun where we are incorporating more boxing elements to make it more of a back and forth, be able to kind of fight at all ranges kind of approach. In my mind, a better combination with Wing Chun than modern boxing is some of the old school boxing methods, which I wanted to kind of address. First, we got the idea of what is good structure. In Wing Chun, we're taught to keep an upright posture, to keep things aligned, so we've got a good, solid, moving power base. We can use our hips. Modern boxing has a structure that is often bent with the weight carried high, and they swing more from the shoulders which is not conducive to Wing Chun at all. We think in terms for Wing Chun, we have a, from, from a Chinese medicine theory, the, the triple burner, the triple warmer. You have a lower Tan Tian, middle Tan Tian, and upper Tan Tian. It's the same thing in yogic theory. You have several chakras, and this happens to be three of them. And Wing Chun, good structure, says we try to keep our weight centered, our center of gravity and our center of action at the Tan Tian, the lower burner, so to speak, down here. So when we move, our weight is all pivoting around and centering at that point. Boxing tends to keep their weight up a little higher near the upper Tan Tian, which is why you see them bent more at the waist and moving more from the upper body than from the lower body. That's not to say they're not using their hips, but they're carrying their weight and their center of gravity higher, which is not Wing Chun structure. However, the old school boxers stood more upright carried their weight down low and took a structure like this. So that's kind of what we're going to base things off of. Another thing you see people do, this whole idea of protect your chin, tuck your chin, hunch your shoulders is a modern boxing thing. The minute you lift your shoulders and hunch your shoulders up, you uncouple your elbows from your hips. You bring your center of gravity up to your chest and your breathing becomes more shallow. You're no longer breathing to the Tan Tian. Just play with it. Try it. Put your shoulders up high like a boxer would and suddenly your weight is high and you're hunching over. Not Wing Chun structure. Keep the shoulders down. We keep the shoulders down, it keeps the elbow coupled with the hip, which is part of the power line, which we'll talk about. So that's the key to box with Wing Chun. Keep an upright structure, keep your center of gravity, your weight carried low, keep your sh shoulders down so your elbows stay down. And then you can move back and forth and it's going to be a lot more Wing Chun-like than boxing-like or modern boxing-like. Now the idea of a power line, biomechanically speaking, when we're going to put power forward, power wants, we want the power to come from the ground and our knee, our hip, should be aligned with the punch. The elbow should be down so it's coupled with the hip. So the power line goes out straight like this. When we're standing in a, a good Yi Ji Kim Yong Ma, our, our, our legs are turned inward, our hip is inward, our knees are inward because we're focusing right in front of us. So our power line is here. So it makes sense. If I'm squared up with Bob, my power line is going right into the center of Bob from both hips. And I can punch with my other hand and use my hips coupled with my elbows to generate the force. Okay? If I'm not going to stand square to Bob, and I'm going to put one foot forward, now my power line still needs to be aligned straight into Bob's center. So my hip, my hip, my knee, elbow down, all coupled into one power line to generate good force. 
it doesn't make sense to turn this foot inward. So now my power line is going that way and punch across my power line. It makes no sense. So that foot needs to point right where I'm putting up my force. So in this kind of Wing Chun boxing structure, I step back so you can see better. Look at my feet. I'm not standing this way. I open it out. So if this foot is going to punt, point straight at my target, this foot is off at 45 degrees. Now, instead of my hands being out here, I take that more old school boxer's posture, just modify it a little bit, so I'm here. Now I can move smoothly, side to side, back and forth, like the old time boxers did. So, think of this power line coming straight out. If I have to use my rear hand, then as I pivot, my foot pivots a little bit, so my rear hip, knee, power line is lining up so I can hit. So I still can hit freely. Still got that power line going right at Bob's center. Okay. That's the power line. Now, another thing we can take from the old school boxers, this idea of the power line, they also used what they called a drop step or a falling step, or trigger step. Different fighters use different names. Jack Dempsey wrote about this in his book. The idea with a drop step is, I'm coming in, I can get power into my lead punch as my weight drops forward. So, if I do it slowly, if you look at my upper body, if I don't even use a punch, as I step forward, I drop. Bam, bam, bam. And it can either be heel to toe, or I can just be hitting flat-footed. The idea is as I step forward, my body drops and I get that sudden explode forward. So if I put that with a punch, I can be standing out here, use a drop step stepping in. And again, as I'm coming in, I'm getting this effect. I can be way out here from Bob, be taking in things and just step in, drop step, bam. I can move it closer, where I don't even take a step. It's just a weight shift from being 50-50 and then dropping my weight forward. I can still get a lot of power with that lead punch with a drop step. So that's something to work on. Because if you're going to box with Wing Chun, you need to have a good lead punch, whether you choose left or right. That means you put it out there and you're ready to use it to stop somebody immediately without worrying about blocking. Just stop hit. Just want to was, you know, center to Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. So again, a drop step coming in, dropping the weight forward with a punch. Okay. Now, other punches we're going to use. Good Wing Chun structure says the elbow is coupled with the hip, so it's part of this power line. So I'm using my lower body, rotating around my Tan Tien, using my Kwa, to generate force. So my punches can vary as long as I have my elbow coupled with my hip. The minute I hunch my shoulder, my elbow comes up, it's no longer coupled with my hip. I keep my shoulder down, I can lift my arm, and I'm still going to be coupled with my hip. So if you think of the arc from a Tan Sao to Bong Sao and back, anywhere along that arc can be used as a punch. I don't have to have my elbows glued to the center line when I punch. So I can punch out here. I'm still within that arc and I'm still coupled with my hip. As opposed to the way a modern boxer might do it, where he's punching this way. Now my elbow and my hip are no longer coupled. Most of my force is going through my shoulder. So I can punch straight, I can punch low, I can punch at an angle because my elbow is still down and I still got the hip supporting my elbow and my punch. So if I just worked Bob with a typical boxing combination, I'd be here and I could hit. And notice I never did this 
right? It's all upright, it's all solid, it's all lined up using my hip, keeping my center of gravity low. Do some infighting with our Wing Chun from this perspective. If I, standing square to Bob, were doing something, he throws a wide swinging punch, I block with a Busao, I can step in and collect his arm. Right? We do that all the time. So I've covered, I've collected, I've got this arm, and now I can work. Got his arm. I've been working. Boom. I'm also keeping him off balance. I'm not just standing there, let him to get set. I'm moving him around. As I'm working. So at a certain point, my transition from this after a few blows, let this arm glow and step in and catch him here. That should look familiar, right? And jump you. So I let this go. Step in now. I've got him here. Working this way. Again, I don't let him get set. Keep him off balance. Alright. Now let's say my side is open here. Bob can be doing the same thing to me. Trying to keep him off balance to make it hard for him to do that. But let's say he's a good strong puncher with his right hand. And he's hitting me a few times, and I don't like it. So I switch. So he starts to punch me. I catch it, and I hit I'm on this side. That should look familiar too, right? That's just this. So I've collected this arm. I've gone to this. I want to switch sides. Now I've got Bob on this side. At a certain point, Okay. Again, I'm always set, I'm always solid, none of this kind of stuff, none of this dancing around, I'm always here. That's my version, in a nutshell, without a box with Wing Chun.